case you've been living under a rock, things aren't going very well for Disney at the moment. The Marvel brand specifically is what we're going to be looking at, and its most recent release over this past weekend has been horrendous. We've been documenting it throughout this entire past week, and now, finally, the receipts are in, the tickets have been purchased, or a lack thereof, and well, we're finding out some very uncomfortable truths. Marvel isn't dying, Disney isn't in trouble, Disney is burning, and Marvel is dead. I had this graph pulled up before, and we went through it the last time that we took a look, okay? For its Thursday preview, $6.6 .6 million compared to a whole bunch of other contemporary films, ones within the MCU and other ones that came out earlier this year, noting very specifically that they were lagging behind everything, okay? The first film in Phase 4, directly after the most profitable cinematic endeavor in Marvel's history, even with a day and date release that also came out on Disney Plus, pulling in $13.2 million on the Thursday previews, doubling what the Marvels did. The Eternals, the bottom of the barrel, up until a certain point, far ahead of that still, and then of course, the biggest flop this year, Ant-Man in regards to Marvel. Ant-Man was $17.5 million. Well, of course, that didn't end up shaking out to a good Friday when it was all, you know, open for everybody, not previews, not early viewings or anything like that. $21.3 million with no other competition that's out there. The only thing, this is the thing that came in second place, which I guess we have something good to report for the Marvels, it did end up winning the weekend. Because what, its stiffest competition was the third weekend of Five Night at or five nights at Friday's, it did exceptionally well, given the timing that it came out with. It's like, oh wow, you have a popular horror franchise come out around Halloween. Fantastic stuff, and it did well, and its fall off was expected, but it did rake in a bunch of money, and what? Uh, the Taylor Swift concert film in its fifth week that's out there, Dune getting moved off until I think March it comes out now. The runway was opened, and you still landed nose down and blew past the end of it 21.3 million dollars the film's a domestic opening day the lowest in mcu history well maybe maybe it rebounded on saturday right maybe maybe that's gonna be the oh no oh oh god no the marvel's meltdown disney mcu posts the lowest box office opening ever at 47 million dollars hey i did give it credit it did end up winning the weekend and it did hit projections just the low end of the projections where it was revised again to be even lower listen okay it still fell in with the range okay so i guess chalk one up to the odds makers Ugh, what went wrong the sunday update well we do in fact have the sunday update on that to just give you a full holistic approach to this just to see how bad it is now we're just only gonna have to see because this is terrible this is atrocious this film cost north of 330 million dollars it's not even gonna make back its production budget that's what it really looks like right now last minute push for the marvels uh, with an appearance by star brie larson on friday's the tonight show oh wow she was out there nobody cared and it didn't translate at all and at a theater in nyc's post actor strike has not moved the weekend grosses any higher for the marvel studio the marvels the film is posing a three day at the bottom of yesterday's estimates with 47 million dollars the lowest ever for disney's marvel cinematic universe and that's even prior to the Disney purchase, that includes the Paramount films. That says, right there, even without adjusting for inflation, The Incredible Hulk, the second, when it was still a standalone feature, back in 2008, had a better opening weekend than 2023's The Marvels. It's dead. It's done. Got, there's no coming back from this. It's, it, it's reboot season. I just want to know how many fucking scalps are going to get put up on the wall after this one. It's going to be such a fun week. Don't blame the running time as the Marvel's clock's in at 97 minutes. That's including credits and all that jazz. It's short, sweet, and fucking atrocious. When I was, you can tell, I've got some decorations in the background. I was a little bit busy yesterday, but I was listening to a full, long breakdown. EFAP did a big... A five hour long breakdown on this 97 minute film and oh boy 
it sounds atrocious, but this isn't going to be a review of the film. No, no, no. I'm just reviewing the box office numbers. And well, that's a story that's far more compelling than what I heard when it comes to the breakdown of this. Oh God, I don't pity anybody who went, but it looks like everybody kind of heeded that warning and stayed the fuck away. Marvel Saturday was $15.3 million down 30% against previews. Oh my God. And Friday at Oh, yeah, of uh, $25.5 million. Yeah, we've seen that before. Worldwide, per Nancy, who's who's Nancy, okay, who will have an update soon, is at $110 million. Yeah, yeah, that's what we have right here. $110 million global opening, the lowest ever for Disney MCU offshore and worldwide. Guys, I can't tell you how bad this is for the entire in entertainment industrial complex. I'm not sad about this. I am so fucking grateful, okay? The faster it all gets reduced to ashes, the faster something better can be erected in its replacement. I've said this multiple times over, and this still stands true because I haven't seen anything that could possibly tempt me back into the theater. The last thing that I seen that was in the theaters was The Dark Knight Rises. I walked out of that film just going, wow, that was all right. And then the more I thought about it, the angrier and angrier I got. Like, how the fuck did he get? Okay, so he got out of the prison. How the fuck did he get back to Gotham? Okay, um, he, he fixed the autopilot, but how could he get so far out of Gotham? And why didn't you see him eject from the Batwing? And wh why is he over in France? Why was this coincidental? The plot of that film falls apart under a cursory amount of scrutiny. And then the last new film that I seen get released in a home sense was Iron Man 3. So for me, the Marvel Cinematic Universe has been dead for a very long time. Finally, everybody's just catching up. The $110.3 million global launch estimates include $63.3 million from international box offices in 51 markets, 47 point, yeah, $47 million domestic. Oh, and yeah, that's terrible because the way that it breaks down, okay, because Disney's, uh, Disney's not going to recoup any of their money on this one. This is going to be losing hundreds of millions of dollars. If you also factor in promotional marketing, which is, you know, and the low end estimates of that is a hundred million dollars all the way up to about 150. When it comes to actual tangible ticket sales, which I'd also be interested in uh, maybe breaking down in the future as well, how many people actually went and seen because we're just getting raw numbers, how much money was collected at the cinemas themselves, which do on a domestic side, uh, the domestic box office. So Canada, I Canada, the United States, and maybe Mexico. I could be off on that one. That one could be included in the international, but Disney, Marvel, they get 50% of those ticket sales right there. Okay. So they end up taking back that money. The other 50% stays at the theaters and that's totally fine. And then when it comes to the international stuff, they get in some places, 40% uh, in China, they get 25%. That's why whenever you hear somebody break down how much money a film has to make in order to break even or turn a profit, and they always end up in multiplying the production budget by two, two and a half, three times, that's what ends up happening. And when it comes, when Marvel was running hot in its heyday, it was making a lot of money in international markets. I think that ended up being Captain Marvel's big split as well, where it made about 60% of its money ab abroad. No offense. So if they hope to mitigate their losses here, they kind of want to flip reverse that and make more money domestically. But I would also imagine it's probably going to dry up, even though well, next week, what's the big release next week? All right, the Hunger Games prequel. Oh, oh, we're, we're eating good right now for everybody who just wants to see this shit fall and quickly. Okay, there's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, there's an, some not so bad news. That's very clunky. In that the Marvels open number one in all material markets outside a local fair. Uh, India has a big movie this weekend, Tiger 3. Okay, which is a different uh, rollout plan. I, okay, whatever. So it didn't... Re it didn't finish number one in India, but it finished number one everywhere else. But it still only made $110 million. That's terrible. That's atrocious. And most of your Marvel fall-offs are anywhere between 50 and 70%. Word of mouth on this film is fucking trash. I didn't even bother to pull up the Rotten Tomatoes for... <laughs> reviews because there's probably more cope on there than in the Ron DeSantis camp on debate night. Like you can just run around and uh, jerk each other off and think that, oh my God, the Marvels is, oh, is the best Marvel products is the last Marvel product to come out. But guess what? The normies, they're gone. 
because you diarrhea shit way too much garbage directly into their mouth for fucking years outside of a couple bright spots the general marvel fair all of it may as well have been written by m night Shyamalan for how much it made sense and at this point in time making sense is probably an optimistic outlook when it comes to box office returns china china is as was expected came in really low yeah because they're not down for this fucking forced diversity shit just take a look i i also wonder what the uh, uh marketing poster looked like we know that it was marketed in some uh, markets abroad as captain marvel 2 which it should have been anyways and if you wanted a little tagline the marvels or the quasi a force whatever the fuck you want to call this little group because it made no sense at all whatsoever until you start to dig in and realize that even marvel disney knew that captain marvel brie larson isn't a movie star wasn't a likable character you fucked up tremendously it's curious that there is still no mayo um mayo and mayo and audience score sorry and the dubin critics thrashing is clearly not helping i don't know what any of those words mean but uh, i'm sure they're important nevertheless the market was the tops it was tops for the marvels with 11.7 .7 million dollars for the launch followed by the uk 4.3 million oh indonesia or yeah indonesia 3.7 korea 3.5 million in France. Oh, yes. Oh, we don't like it because she's not smoking enough cigarette and we cannot see her armpit hair uh, through any of her costumes that she has there. And when she take off her, her top, uh, we can't see any chest hair coming out. We like our women a certain way. But come on, we can't just completely dump on the Marvels. We got to dump on the French whenever we get a chance. In IMAX, the Marvels grossed $10 million globally, including $3.6 million from offshore. Meanwhile, in India for the Diwali holiday. A Tiger 3 not going, oh, got going today. That's fantastic. But by looking at this with other metrics, US admissions, uh, the Marvels came in with an uh, intelligence, sure, at 3.3 million per, uh, compared to other superhero bombs, the Flash at 3.9 million, and the Eternals at 5.5 million. So that's how many people actually went and seen this stuff to account. Okay, so I don't even need to break this stuff down. That's fucking atrocious, man. Falling behind the Flash. DC's biggest atrocity. I'm going to revise this, man. I'm starting to think. Maybe, maybe I'm just working myself up into a frenzy on this one. I'm thinking Aquaman 2, especially with its timing and with its generally likable lead star. I know, I know, the Amber Heard curse that's on there. I'm, th I'm thinking Aquaman 2 has a chance of making more money than the Marvels, man. I'm raising my probability. We're probably at about 40% chance right now. I just got to see how big this drop is going to be because you can also read into that as well. Like The Flash had so much marketing, so much goodwill because uh, James Gunn was out there reaching out to everybody saying, oh my God, this is the greatest superhero film that I've ever seen. Trying to quote mine off of everybody else. Trying to minimize Ezra Miller's inclusion as The Flash, which is kind of weird. By just putting Michael Keaton Eaton's Batman front and center and having cameos from all your other favorite dead properties. But still, it managed to get 3.9 million people through the turnstiles. The Marvels, which is still theoretically all a part of the mainline MCU, all a part of the connected universe, 3.3 million people. Yo. And also, okay, the Marvels got one of several post-pandemic B cinema scores from the audience after Doctor Strange, Multiverse and or Multiverse of Madness, B plus, far too nice to that. Uh, Thor, Love and Thunder, B plus, ugh, The Eternals, B, oof, and Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, a B. A com score, screen, engine, post track exits are worse at three and a half stars and a 73% positive. Yo, by all accounts and by all sources, it's a disastrous result for a $200 million Marvel Studios movie. That's not even close, man, because the last time that we seen concrete numbers on this shit, $330 million. That's what we got. Now, we won't hear anything conclusive as to the full production budget until tax season in 2024, because in order to get some sort of relief for this catastrophic bomb, Disney has to file the taxes in the UK where it's just all transparent. So then you can see the budget right there and then just revise as appropriately. Marvel's misfire is about the rusting of a platinum brand that's in need of some serious, not polishing, rather resurfacing. Interesting. Months ago, uh, who would have thought the Universal Bloomhouse's Five Nights at Freddy's two weeks ago in a day and date debut on Peacock would uh, post a higher opening Oh, at the box office, $80 million in the Marvels. Just about doubled it. Fucking fr Five Nights at Freddy's just about doubled the Marvels. A fucking $20 million film. 
Yo, man, there are so many things that you can pick apart from this, but the only thing that eventually comes to conclusion, the only thing that we can all definitively learn from this situation, Marvel as a brand in this current incarnation, the key jangling doesn't work anymore. As heavily as they used it to try to market and tried to set up the X-Men coming down the line, it's done. It's dead. There's no resuscitating it. A resurfacing? No, 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 man. You've got to rinse everything out. It's like doing an oil change on an old pickup that has just sat for far too long. Everything out right now. All of the fluids. You got to drain that shit from toes to titties because it's all rotten all the way down. But hey, guys, don't worry about it. They're going to take all of this stuff seriously with Captain Black Falcon America Brave New World Order. It got pushed back for an additional five months because it's going through extensive reshoots. All of that post-production magic. It's going to work this time, right? Right? Yeah, I don't think so. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.